order and pledge to the flag? Yes, sir. Uh, Christopher Hall will lead us in the pledge. He is a junior at Pocosin High School. He has been involved with band in Pocosin School since, since, since sixth grade. He especially enjoys playing the bass drum on the marching band drum line. He is also involved in athletics as a distance runner in both cross country and track and field. In addition to holding a part-time job at Langley Air Force Base, Chris is an active volunteer in the community. <coughs> He has volunteered at the Pocosin Library during the past two summers and serves regularly at the Poten Peninsula Rescue Mission in Newport News. In the future, Chris wants to serve in either the Air Force or the Navy and pursue a degree in history in order to teach at the high school level. Please stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Tonight's inspirational reader is Megan Hedgepath, who is a senior at Pocosin High School. She is an honorable student involved in many activities. <coughs> she has played JV basketball, varsity track, and is currently the JV basketball manager. She is also active in the Future Educators of Tomorrow Club. Megan plans to attend either Longwood University or Lynchburg College and major in elementary education and special education. Okay, the group and I just completed a very fun and educational program with our Czech students or what we like to call family from the GUH. This program was an amazing time and it's an important part of a global-based education program. Former Secretary of State Madeleine Albright had said that the world is constantly changing and education needs to reach beyond the barriers that once existed. International learning brings people of all different ethnicities together and makes them realize that there is a world that exists outside of their own country's boundaries. Albright speaks of the struggles that take place to understand the world that surrounds us. Albright has said that our ability to prevail in these struggles must begin with a desire to learn. Often people in America do not appreciate the lives of the people outside of our country, but Albright thinks that these ideas must change and that exchange programs are on the right track to begin a change. Albright's idea is that to successfully work in a global environment, we must challenge ourselves to develop the ability to play well with others in terms of the global playground. Albright has also said that instead of people looking at the exotic names on a lifeless map, countries become real places filled with fascinating people whose anxieties and dreams are not so different after all. Pocosin's exchange with GUH allows the students of Pocosin City Schools to be the people who interact with fascinating students from the Czech Republic who in so many ways are just like us. Thank you. Thank you, Chris and Megan, for starting us off this evening. Uh, we're going to move into student presentations. We have two this evening, but I'd like to ask if all the uh, students, when you're finished, we're going to have recognitions right after that. And if you all could hang out in the uh, conference room here for just a few minutes after recognitions, we'd like to take a short break to be able to come down and talk to you about your presentations. So with that, we'll move into the first presentation tonight. And uh, it's going to be for the uh, students who recently visited us from the Czech Republic that we just heard about from Megan. And this is for the third year because in high school students and staff have participated in a school to school partnership with the students from the GUH in the Czech Republic. From October 21st to November 1st, as part of the Pocosin City Schools International Program, five gymnasium students and one teacher visited in the homes of Pocosin students and toured historical and cultural sites in and around the area. They also attended school at Pocosin High School and provided presentations to high school and the elementary school students. Tonight we have five students from Pocosin High School who will be relating highlights from their visit with the Czech students. Christopher Hall is a high school junior. Megan Hedgepeth is a senior. Sam Cody Sidner is a junior. Breland Bowen, sophomore. And Ann Bachman, also a sophomore, will be doing the presentation this evening. The students, if you come forward. Hey guys, I'm Sam Cody Sidner, and I hosted Libor. Um, 
Well, obviously we're here to tell you all about the Czech student's visit to Pocosin here. To start off, the students arrived here very late. Well, actually, very early. We had to stay up till 12.30 or 1 a.m. because of the really late flight time. Even though we were all really tired, we were all very excited to meet our friends for the first time. Uh, to start off their visit, they went to Washington, D.C. There they learned about American history by visiting um, monuments, museums, and the National Archives. And here we have a picture of them in front of the White House. And here is Tomasz, the student's teacher from the Czech Republic, and he's at the Smithsonian Institute. They also visited the Capitol building, and um, it's the whole group here, and going from left to right, it's Anna, Tomasz, Premik, Katerina, Libor, and Aliska. Their second visit was to NASA down the road here. Uh, they visited the TV studio there, and they were interviewed for an educational TV show. And they also visited the National Transonic Facility and visited the, the wind tunnels there. Hi, I'm Brelin Bowen, and I hosted Alishka. In the top right-hand corner is a picture of the Czech students at the Lunar Habitat Facility. And then in the bottom left is this, a picture of the students with the um, pumpkin airbag at the NASA Landing and Impact Facility. Um, also at NASA, the students met scientists working with Czech schools for worldwide ozone measurements. And this picture is just an example of how other Czech schools are working with NASA for the GLOBE program. Um, their next activity took them to historical Richmond. And here we have just some pictures of the sites that they saw. The first picture being the Richmond Capitol building. And the second picture of one of the students, Anna, in front of a Civil War monument. And some other sites included um, a George Washington Monument and um, an old Civil War Medical Museum, also in Richmond. Hey, I'm Chris Hall, and I hosted Premick. The Czech students learned about the founding of America by visiting Jamestown and Williamsburg. This is a picture. <laughs> this is a picture with the students and the teacher in an old Indian canoe. They also learn the local history by seeing the USS Wisconsin and the MacArthur Memorial. Hi, and I hosted Katerina. The Czech students went to PHS and P PES classrooms to talk about <coughs> the Czech Republic. Also, they attended their first pep rally ever during homecoming week. <laughs> <laughs> While we were in Bacosin, they got a great taste of American family life. My family took Katerina to a Virginia Tech football game. Others took the students to church, sailing, band competitions, laser tagging, and we did lots of shopping. Hi, I'm Megan, and I hosted Anna. During their stay in Pocosin, we showed the Czech students many American customs and traditions such as the homecoming dance, a Halloween party, and a pumpkin carving night. In the top left picture, you have me, Anna, Chris, and Premik before the homecoming dance. In the bottom picture, you have Premik with his two host brothers, Andrew and Ricky, at the Halloween party. <coughs> We also took the students to their first football game and to a tailgating party for the 100th anniversary of Pocosin High School. In the top left picture, there's just a group of us and our host students, a group of them and their host students, at the 100th tailgating party. And in the right picture, we have Premik, who is attending his first American football game. Saying goodbye to our new family was really hard. But after the students' long tying 10 day stay in Pocosin, it was time for them to leave. It was a sad and depressing 30 minutes saying our farewells, but we all had such a great, amazing time and made so many new friends that we hope to see again in spring break. Thank you. Or do you have any questions for the students? <laughs> I'll ask a question. Just um, would you recommend 
this to other students to host a family? Absolutely. Oh, yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. It, was it was a ton of fun. Yeah, it was a wonderful experience. Good. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, our next presentation this evening will be the first grade class at Pocosin Primary School. Ms. Jody King's class is going to be presenting past and present. So first graders, if you'd come up. We are in Ms. King's first grade class. We are going to tell you some things about the past. Mac, I know we're learning about the past, but we live in the present. Can't we do something a little more fun with the information we learned? Sounds good to me. I thought this was going to be boring anyways. <laughs> And I have to tell you before we begin, we have been learning so much information and practicing so much with music. However, the reason that I took so long, Mrs. Henshaw and I have been working, oh, have been learning this afternoon, and the music would not come with me this evening. So we're going to do something called winging it. We're, gonna, <laughs> we're going to do it a cappella. That means we're going to do it without the music. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. It'll be great. It'll be just like at calendar time when we talk about when we do that part. Okay. <laughs>
A blue coat's town. So there you are. So there you are. The past and now. The past and now. The future's next. The future's next. Oh, holy cow. Oh, holy cow. Stay tuned for more. Stay tuned for more. As we mature. As we mature. Our future's bright. Our future's bright. And that's for sure. And that's for sure. We've got a feeling. Feeling. The future's for us. Our outside. Thank you very, very much for, for, for that. That was an uh, excellent presentation to the first grade class. All right, we'll move on to the next item, additions and modifications. Do we have any this evening? We do not. Okay, then we'll move right into recognitions. Uh, Dr. Parrish, would you like to take those, please? Certainly. Our first recognition is for Ryan Holland this evening. If he could come forward, please. We're recognizing Ryan this evening because he received a letter of commendation for his score on the National Merit Scholarship Test. He is a senior at Precocin High School and a member of the National Honor Society, French Honor Society, and Mu Alpha Theta. He is also a four-year band member and a current section leader. He's an AP scholar as well. Ryan is applying to Virginia Tech. He likes to listen to music, sing, and play the guitar, contrabass, clarinet, marimba, the ma mandolin, and the banjo. He also likes working on cars, hanging out with friends, and going to the gun, gun range. Please join me in congratulating Ryan Holland this evening. Our next recognition for the evening is Sean Hopkins. If he could come forward, please. We're recognizing Sean this evening because he has been named to the State Honors Choir, which is a select group of seniors who will perform at the State Educators Conference. Only the very best choral students across the state are selected for this chorus. Sean is a senior at Precocin High School and plans to attend James Madison University, where he wants to major in music industry. He's a member of the Jazz Choir and the Symphonic Band. He also plans to continue his studies in voice when he goes to college. Please join me in congratulating Sean on his accomplishment. We're actually recognizing um, an entire newspaper staff this evening, but I would ask at this point if Aaron Brent, our editor-in-chief, would come forward, please. Wells, Miss Holder, I believe she's here. <laughs> the Island Echo, Procosin's high school newspaper, has received top honors in the state for the second consecutive year for journalism as part of the VHSL's Jostens Regional Publication Championship, which is held in Richmond. The Island Echo is one of only 16 school newspapers in the state to receive a superior rating. While the competition took place in October, it was based on the newspapers from the last school year. 
Erin Brent is editor-in-chief for this school year. She's accepting this award on behalf of the newspaper staff, and she's accompanied by our faculty sponsor, Ms. Dory Holder. Erin has been on the newspaper staff for her entire high school career, and in her sophomore year was truck editor. In this, her senior year, she is editor-in-chief. She is also a member of the PHS Key Club and a JV cheerleader. She is a member of the Bethel Baptist Church Youth Group and would like to major in early childhood education in college and become an elementary school teacher. Please join me in congratulating both Erin, Ms. Holder, and the entire Island Echo staff at Percocin High School. Our next recognition is actually going to one of our schools, but I would ask for the presentation for Mr. Todd Pirelli, the principal at Procosa Middle School, to come forward. Mr. Mike Crago, he's one of our PE teachers, and Ms. Chris Ziegler, who's our director of food service. They're being recognized this evening because of um, their accomplishments in being recognized by the Governor's Nutrition and Physical Activity Program. The Governor's Nutrition and Physical Activity Award Program promotes health and wellness in Virginia's public schools by encouraging good nutrition and increased physical activity. Schools can earn either a bronze, silver, or gold award for best practices that promote healthy lifestyles while combating childhood obesity, hypertension, and other preventable diseases. This interactive scorecard allows schools to measure their progress and receive recognition for their success in meeting the goals of the Governor's Healthy Virginians Initiative. Brocosa Middle School received the Silver Award for this program. Please join me this evening in congratulating the entire school and specifically the people who are receiving those awards on their behalf this evening. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a short recess, and we'll be back on the air in just a minute after we have an opportunity to talk to our presenters this evening. Thank you.
true, 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 true. Exactly. It's magic. Yeah. <laughs> Where are they going? <laughs> There's a crowd. Now there's no crowd. Okay, we're back. Move into item five on the agenda, presentations and reports. Our first report this evening will be our financial update by Mr. Bill Bowen. Good evening, Chairman Diggs, school board members, and Dr. Parrish. <clears throat> Little information has come forward from the state since our last meeting, but what, what we have learned, uh, I want to share with you this evening. The state is reporting that revenue collections for October have increased 3.7% over the prior year. The good news is this is the third consecutive month that the state has reported uh, an increase. But the cautious news, and it's important to note this, um, although we're seeing signs that the economy is starting to approve, improve, uh, actual revenue collections are still falling short of state projections. Now we don't know what kind of impact this revenue shortfall will have on our budget for this year. But what we do know is that state agencies uh, have been instructed to prepare budget reductions in the amounts of 2, 4, and 6 percent. But no such instructions have been, pa have been passed down to K K-12. So um, uh, I wanted to give you just an idea of, of, of what a 2 percent reduction would mean to our budget. It would be about $212,000, which is a very significant reduction. Mm -hmm. But I emphasize this is why we have, <clears throat> excuse me, this is why, why we have our stimulus funds, just in case uh, we have a cut. The state is also reporting that increase in revenue is largely fueled by um, an increase in sales tax. Now, what this means to the school division is that our revenue is going to be adjusted this, this year. We're going to see our sales tax revenue increase and we'll see our basic aid decrease. Now, this doesn't mean that this is a budget cut. And this is just a mere reflection of the state's funding formula for education. Um, any other adjustments or any specific budget cuts won't be known until the governor releases his budget on December 17th. I would also like to take this opportunity to remind the community um, about where we are with our uh, federal jobs bill funds. The, there have been several articles in the paper. There's even been an editorial in the Daily Press, so it has created some questions. In September, PCPS received an allocation of 492000 in federal jobs bill funds. This information was presented by the superintendent to the, school board, uh, to the school board meeting in September and at the work session. You as a board decided to wait until the budget process began, which really doesn't begin in earnest until... Uh, the governor releases his budget. But since that time, there have been questions whether these funds will be used to offset state cuts for FY12. Superintendents and school boards have been advised by the governor, have been advised by other um, state uh, associations that you should plan to spend this money very, very wisely. So that's what we have done. Uh, at this time, we're just waiting for more specific information to be released by the governor, by the Department of Education, before we bring recommendations to the board. That's our update this evening. Okay, thank you. Board, any questions for Mr. Bowen? Uh, Mr. Bowen, at this point, how would you uh, characterize our fiscal year? Have we had any unanticipated expenses? Are we on track? Where, where do we feel like we're at? I feel at this point we're on track. Uh, there has, like I said, the information coming from Richmond has been uh, very uh, sparse. I mean, there's, there's really not much coming forward. We just are anticipating what others are, are anticipating, which are there are going to be cuts this year, the amounts we don't know. Um, but like I said, we, we do have some reserves with our stimulus funds, and we are, we, we are prepared to absorb some of those call, uh, cuts, any potential cuts with our stimulus funds. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Bowen. Mm -hmm. Our next presentation this night will be an operations update. Mr. Pappas. Good evening, Chairman Diggs, 
School Board, Dr. Parrish. In the area of custodial services, it doesn't come as a surprise that we once again are, that's not for me, by the way, I don't have a presentation with pictures tonight. Um, the onset of flu season is here, and we are stepping up our germ remediation practices. This includes greater frequency of disinfecting desktops and combating the spread of flu through regular, our regular program of disinfecting both buses and entire classrooms. We'll perform these practices throughout the entire flu season. In the area of food service, we continue to work with each school's wellness committee chair and provide them with nutritional information that will help promote continuing education in the area of healthy food and nutrition opportunities. In the area of maintenance, uh, with the exception of the primary school, where we're still using air conditioning, which I'm sure they were grateful today, we have uh, made the conversion from cooling to heating in all of our other buildings that are two pipe systems. And I'm very pleased to report that our new high efficiency boilers in the middle school are functioning and uh, they're both providing heat and great operating efficiency. These boilers have the ability to modify the water temperature that they put through the pipes. Our old boilers, and even the boilers in the primary school, when they're on, they're on. You're getting 160 to 180 degrees of water running through the pipes. Here, it's a smart boiler. It senses that it only needs to pump 90 degrees to give you a comfort. It's uh, much more efficient. I'm very pleased with that. In the area of transportation, working with the city garage, after our bus number 10, with a mere 249,000 miles, decided it needed a major engine rebuild, uh, we were able, the city garage and I, were able to locate a bus, a handicapped bus on the south side, which we were able to purchase that only has 108,000 miles on it, spring chicken compared to ours. And uh, with the cost of that bus and what we will be able to get through the salvage value of our bus, it'll almost be a complete offset. That's my presentation. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Yes, sir. Mr. Pappas, uh, about what is the average bus, uh, how many miles does it put on it a year? Um, School year. I, I remember last year it was something like 323,000 miles or 263 for the entire fleet. So we could just divide that by 15 and there you go. Okay. Mr. Pappas, do we track the maintenance cost for each bus annually? Um, those records are available in the garage. We just get the bill monthly. It's not broken out uh, currently for me, although I can, I can access it. So looking at a new bus, you would look at those maintenance records to see which buses are running higher, would you look at years? Absolutely. Uh, we work with the garage and we have a replacement schedule and that was done jointly. And we looked at the bus regardless of its years. Sometimes the year of a bus belies the actual condition. Uh, in fact, one of our newer buses that was purchased 10 years ago is, lives in the shop. Mm -hmm. So that's a new bus to us and yet it might be on the replacement block sooner than some of the older buses. Okay, thank you. Yes. Board, any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Pappas. And next for an instructional update, I'm gonna let Dr. Parrish introduce this. Yes, we actually have a combination um, presentation or update this evening. Mr. Joe Johnson, who's the Executive Director of the New Horizons Regional Education Center, is here this evening to present um, just general information about um, the New Horizons programs as well as um, how our students are participating in those programs. And then uh, Dr. Revia is going to follow up because we have a new program in our high school that we've talked about before, but we wanted to share some more information about it this evening that really links into the New Horizons program. And Mr. Johnson was certainly um, very helpful in helping us to get that program off the ground. So um, with that said, we'll have the two of them um, begin their presentation.
Chairman Diggs, board members, Dr. Parrish, thank you for allowing me to come this evening and inviting me to talk about New Horizons, the Regional Education Center. And this is a treat, to be able to, to partner with actually the person in the division that's responsible for the instruction, especially technical instruction, um, it, I have never had to do that before, and that's wonderful. That truly shows partnership. Uh, and Dr. Parrish each year has invited board members to come and tour the facility, and I want to thank you all for doing that for the last two years. New Horizons Regional Education Center is operated by the six school divisions on the peninsula. We have a large range of services that are provided. The only two I will not talk about this evening is the Center for Apprenticeship and Adult Training and the William and Mary Family Counseling Center um, where free counseling services are afforded to families and students on the peninsula. The slogan in New Horizons is a, that we are about illuminating minds, igniting passions, and shaping futures. I was giving a tour today and someone asked a student, what did they like about being at New Horizons? And is we get to do what we really enjoy and use our skills, and it's about the passion. The first service I'll talk about is our special education services, um, the Center for Autism and Newport Academy. We serve students with autism, as well as in the Newport Academy, students with emotional disabilities, as well as students that have a combination of emotional disabilities and another cognitive disability. For those with autism, our focus is really on each student having their own communication system, and for those with emotional disabilities, a focus on reading. As you can imagine, most students who come to us um, have our behind in reading, and that's our focus, as well as reduced behavioral incidents. In terms of Pocosin's participation, you've really been averaging about six students within the special education program. These are intense services that cannot be handled within the division. And of the uh, 250 students, approximately, that we serve throughout the peninsula, um, your six represent about 2.4%. In terms of the Governor's School for Science and Technology, uh, this program, as you know, serves gifted students who go through a very stringent admissions process. And the capstone course is really a mentorship course in the community as a part of research that they do. The Governor's School offers three strands, the engineering, the biological, and the scientific programming strands. Hmm, I thought I might have skipped one, I did. Okay, that's good. Last year, y'all had three students that completed the uh, Governor's School for Science and Technology. All of them were accepted by top tier um, colleges and universities as listed by Princeton Review. The three graduates, this is amazing, were, was awarded $649,000 in scholarship or an average of 231,000 each. Now that is not how much they accepted. That just shows you how many colleges were after them to get them there. Uh, the average for all of New Horizons, 68,000 in the governor's school. So those three students were well sought out students. Your enrollment, if I can get that, and you really want to look at these last two numbers. You really have gone from eight um, in year one, in year two, it's a two-year, half-day model. Uh, you currently have 13 in the program, um, and you can see that that has been going up um, this year quite a bit. The 13 of the 157 we have represents about 8% of the total population. The next major service that uh, Pocosin uh, utilizes at, at New Horizons is the Career and Technical Education Center. We offer over 25 different career and technical courses within seven career clusters that you see listed, all the way from automotive construction to the human services. Now this is pretty interesting. You had 14 uh, students who were enrolled in dual enrollment credits and earned 40 college credits. Uh, by being a part of uh, New Horizons. 
we have a number of our courses that are dual enrolled with Thomas Nelson or Tidewater Community College, primarily Thomas Nelson Community College. Your students, 16 of 19, passed their credential exam, and you had, the, as New Horizons, we had an 89% pass rate of students who took credential exam. So what this means is, is that students from Pocosin who are coming for CTE courses, many of them are in earning dual enrollment credit as a result, and they are also earning an industry credential they can take into the workplace that makes them marketable. In fact, New Horizons, uh, um, if you counted us as a high school, led the state in the number of credentials awarded. As you can see, your numbers have also begun increasing from 40, 45 to 48 enrolled in the career and tech programs. Uh, and that represents about 5% of our total population. Now the other part that we wanted to cover this evening is the GATE program. In 2008, uh, New Horizons and the Peninsula School Divisions was one of six school divisions or school areas selected by Governor Kane to implement what he was putting in place as the Governor's Academy for Career and Technical Education. He really wanted to have uh, a substantial impact on career and technical education. In this area, all of the CTE directors and the superintendents got together and we made our grant around uh, and is called the Governor's Academy for Innovation, Technology, and Engineering. And we focused on engineering technology, mechanical and electrical. And our partners are in Thomas Nelson Community College, Rappahannock Community College, ODU, as well as many businesses. It was required to bring everybody to the table. And what we learned was engineering technology um, what was really the focus where we needed to be uh, with our program. And um, once we did that, uh, a key component of our proposal was to eventually work with and towards distant learning. And I'm impressed to say that um, the National Magazine for Career and Technical Education in September features online education and distance learning. And uh, I really am impressed with the board's leadership, that of Dr. Parrish and Dr. Revia, and she will talk about this. Pecos and y'all are leading the way, not only in the peninsula, but I think in a large part of the state. So I'll let you explain what all of y'all have done. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Again, I would like to say how much um, it's been a pleasure to work with Mr. Johnson and the staff at New Horizons to meet the needs of a lot of our students. But I want to end our presentation this evening really focusing on the GATE program. And as Mr. Johnson related, um, the GATE program is focused on engineering technology and we have developed two career pathways that are based on career clusters um, that are part of the Career and Technology Education um, Initiative that's a nationwide initiative. There are 16 major career cluster areas and this is just one that's based on what are the needs in our community and that our children would be likely to come out and get uh, out of our school setting and into the workforce. So that's how these career pathways were developed. So as we progress and work through these career pathways, several of our courses we offer here at Pocosin High School, and then they can feed into courses at New, uh, New Horizons, or they may feed into courses at Thomas Nelson Community College. We found ourselves um, this past spring with students having signed up for courses, and um, as we had some of our um, staff at the high school retire, we were finding that perhaps we didn't have staff who might um, be able to teach these courses. And we always are committed to providing high quality, um, competent staff to provide a rigorous course of study for our students. So we were talking in our CTE meetings, which were being facilitated by Mr. Johnson and Mr. Kramer from New Horizons, and we were brainstorming about some ways that we as Pocosin could continue to offer some very strong courses, um, perhaps looking outside the box. And so what we did is we started brainstorming, and um, onto the table came the idea of ECPI, which is a local college. So while 
while we do have some students already currently enrolled in some dual enrollment courses at Thomas Nelson, we began some discussions with ECPI to see if perhaps because of their current course structure that they might have some courses that align themselves with courses that we were offering. And lo and behold, over the course of time, we found that this opportunity does exist for us to um, enter into a partnership. And so this evening, I'd like to recognize um, Tony Rufi, who is in the audience. He is from ECPI. He's the Director of Education. And he was very instrumental in working with us. He actually sat down with myself and Ms. Romanelli, um, who's one of our CTE teachers. Uh, we sat down with Mr. Kramer, who is um, from the New Horizons uh, Regional Education Center on Butler Farm, to look at how the curriculum of the courses that ECPI currently teaches match up with the standards and competencies of Virginia Department of Education to see would, in fact, this be um, a nice match and alignment, and would we be able to provide this opportunity for our students. And um, over the course of time with the leadership of Dr. Parrish um, saying, yes, we wanted to move forward to, to continue to be offer, um, offering our students a wide range of courses, we um, entered into this uh, um, arrangement, this partnership. And so not only was it an opportunity, but we found it as an area where we could collaborate together. ECPI um, offers their courses online using the learning management system Moodle. And many of you on the board are already aware we use Moodle as a part of our um, Pocosin um, intranet, and we've used it for years. So we knew it would be um, a, a platform that not only would the instructors be comfortable with from ECPI, but that our students would be comfortable with. And it allows them to access the um, technology the two courses that we offer in, in partnership with ECPI are Electronics One, as well as A-plus computer hardware and operating systems. What's really nice, because we were talking about GATE, is that the Electronics One course, they, our students can stay here and take that course, and then next year, if they would like to, they can elect to go to New Horizons and take um, a robotics course. That would be a two-year completer program, and then there's some additional um, programs that they could um, involve themselves with over the course of their high school um, uh, period of time. One of the things that's kind of unique, some of you may say, how can you do electronics online? How can you do A-plus computer hardware online? Well, believe it or not, much like you can do frog dissections online, and they have all kinds of software, the same thing is true for these two courses. But we knew that to fully engage the students and to give them a, a really complete experience, we wanted to make sure that they had time to do some really in-depth lab um, experiences, which actually ECPI has greater facilities to accommodate that. So our students over the course of this year will be taking several field trips to ECPI and they've already done so this year. They've already taken a field trip. The pictures at the bottom are some of our students working, um, and this may be difficult to see, are working with the instructors at ECPI. The electronics course is taught by Mr. Paul Nussbaum who actually um, is in Richmond. He's based in Richmond and our A-plus computer um, hardware course is being taught by Dr. Bousset who lives here in the near community and he actually visits our school um, pretty much every week. Almost every Friday he's in the classroom with the students. But this field trip opportunity gives them a two to three hour experience where they can really get into pulling computers apart for the hardware class as well as setting up and conducting some um, extensive circuitry kinds of uh, circuit board experiments for the electronics class. So. What are the benefits of this program? Because ultimately, school board members, that's who we're looking for. How can we um, provide opportunities for students that benefit them? And you can see, one, it allows us to capitalize on a partnership that we already have with New Horizons. So that's a great benefit. So we're not trying to supplant or replace a program. We're trying to actually augment it. It allows our students to have dual enrollment opportunities, not just with Thomas Nelson Community College, but we also are now providing dual enrollment for these students at ECPI. And the, if they successfully complete the course, a student will learn seven college credits for um, the course for Electronics One, and then the students in the other class will also earn seven college credits. So I know that's one of the things that as a board you've said you want to be able to provide our students greater opportunities to um, seek education beyond our high school. And then finally, um, we have highly qualified instructors 
And that's really important, that we make sure that we're always providing, not just we give a course and someone's, you know, well, I think I'm going to make my way through this. We have two men teaching these courses who are, are highly trained and are engaging to the students and are providing some really strong curriculum online that aligns itself with the State Department. So the other piece, and I, I appreciate, Mr. Johnson, you're bringing the Techniques magazine because I get these every month. And online learning is truly um, not just tomorrow's learning, but it's today's learning. And we have opportunities for many of our students through Virtual Virginia to take AP courses and some other language courses. Um, but this is a great opportunity for us to augment and expand our online offerings for our students um, who may not be taking those courses. So I, I was really pleased that we were able to provide this. So instead of saying to students, no, we don't offer this course, we're able to offer the course and give them that online experience um, in addition to that. So tonight, our instructional update is really all about not only is, um, are we as a school division providing really strong courses here at Pocosin High School, we are in strong partnerships, not only with New Horizons, We've now got a strong partnership with ECPI. Um, it is something that the state is looking at um, to see if it can be replicated in other places. So we're proud not only to offer this opportunity for our students, but we're proud as a school division to lead the way in this particular arena. And that's our presentation this evening. Thank you. Board, any questions? Oh, very exciting. Wow. Thank you for your work. This is very exciting for our students. <clears throat> Okay. I, I have, I have I would, a lot of questions. I would like to say, if I may, we, we do very much appreciate having Mr. Bellamy as our, our representative to New Horizons from the Pocosin School Board. So um, we thank you for doing that. I, I do have a comment. Um, uh, I had the pleasure of, of visiting New Horizons for a tour uh, a couple of weeks ago, I guess it was, and, and I was floored at the programs you had to offer. Um, just ranging anywhere from the, the governor's school to the auto mechanics. I mean, just a, a broad range. It was very professionally handled and, and run. You could tell that it was uh, just a top-notch uh, organization that you have over there. And I'm glad to see that we're increasing our partnerships there and, and looking for opportunities or more opportunities for our students to be involved with uh, New Horizons and now with ECPI. I think that's uh, just an excellent move forward. And um, I applaud you for your work. Thank you very much. I, I, I do have to add something now because I, I think Mr. Carter has not completely told the whole story. He was so enamored with the welding <laughs> that we actually had to leave him behind on the <laughs> tour and move forward and let him catch up. I know, the, the, the smell of the machine oil, and the welding fumes, it was a toy land for me. I was, I was, I'm a hands on kind of person, so. When you start talking about these opportunities for kids, um, it, it becomes personal for me because that's how I learn. If I can get in there and, and smell it and see it and do it and get my hands on it, um, I, I just my learning curve gets very <coughs> steep, and I'm glad to see that we're offering more opportunities for these kids in that manner. So thank you very much. Just a comment on what you just said. I think that's what we're all about here and in, in what Pocosin is striving to do. And, and that is find the gifts that are in all students and right. many of them have different types of gifts and how they come about like yours and the mechanical and so. Absolutely. Um, Thank you very much. Well I better speak up on behalf of my own family. I have a son in his second year heating and air conditioning at New Horizons and Speaks highly of the program, and uh, one day I hope he's good enough to work on my heating and air conditioning <laughs> instead of my house. <laughs> Save me a dollar or two. <laughs> so. <clears throat> Thank you. Board, anything else? I, I have one question for the, uh, the GATE program. Do we know how many students from the Coast are currently involved in that? Um, Actually, the GATE program has many facets, and I see Mrs. Lovell in the audience this evening. We actually have five students who've applied, who are middle school students, to participate in the Saturday events programs that were part of the original um, design of the GATE program to begin engaging middle school students to lead them to want to then involve themselves in engineering technology as they progress through high school and then um, past high school. I believe, I don't have the exact numbers, and I'm not sure if Mr. Wright does, I think we have about 
five or six of our students at the high school. I'm realizing that this is about our second year um, of being, of having developed this program. So uh, we en don't envision that this would, in, uh, again, reach lots and lots of students because we are a one high school school division. But we do envision it reaching a unique set of students. And if we can engage them early, and Mrs. Lovell is, is great about reaching out and trying to grab them in the middle school, we know if we can get them engaged in that kind of a learning, hands-on learning, that then we get them to high school, we can tailor that academic and career plan we talked about last month as we work with the students and, and um, they can earn seals. Last year we didn't have anyone who earned the gate seal, but we are anticipating that we will this year. Oh. And, and to earn that takes four years of science, four years of English, Algebra two or beyond, two years of, of um, uh, foreign language, and a 2.5 GPA or better, plus three courses in the sequence of engineering technology and a completer. So right. it, it, it is fairly rigorous right. to, to be in that academy and program. Absolutely. Thank you. We do, if I could interrupt though, in the ECPI program, how many students do we have? 11. 11, so we do have a number of students in that program. <clears throat> Thank you very much. All right, this will move us to item six on the agenda, to our consent agenda. Bill, would you like to take us through that, please? Tonight's consent agenda, we have three items on there. The approval of the financial reports enclosed, the personnel action enclosed, and authorization to dispose of surplus property also enclosed. And I move that we accept the consent agenda as presented. Do I have a second? Second. All right, thank you. Would you please pull the board? Ms. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Carter? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Mr. Bellamy? Aye. Mr. Smith? Epstein. Chairman Diggs? Aye. The vote motion was passed by a vote of six to one abstain. All right, next on the agenda is uh, other matters for consideration. Item A is approval of minutes for the October regular meeting. Do I have a motion for approval of the minutes from October regular meeting? I move that we approve the minutes of the October regular meeting. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. All right, any discussion? All right, hearing none, then would you please pull the board? Ms. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Carter? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Mr. Bellamy? Aye. Mr. Smith? Abstain. Chairman Diggs? Aye. The motion was passed by a vote of six to one abstain. We have to abstain. Thank you. <laughs> Item B is approval of minutes for the October work session. Do I have a motion for approval? I'll move uh, to approve as presented. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussions or comments for work session? Okay. Hearing none, would you please pull the board? Ms. Wilson? Abstain. Mr. Carter? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Mr. Bellamy? Aye. Mr. Smith? Abstain. Chairman Diggs? Aye. The motion was passed by a vote of five to two abstain. Thank you. All right, our next item is a consideration of approval for the 2011 Capital Improvement Program, and we have a reading file on that. Dr. Parrish, would you take us through that, please? Yes, you have a reading file as well as the attached um, proposal for the CIP, which we're getting up here on the screen momentarily. But as um, you all, you remember, we, um, or you as a board, discussed the CIP in your last two work sessions and made changes based on those discussions as we move through the last two months. Um, the CIP um, is very similar to what um, the board approved last year, but we did do, uh, based on your recommendation, some shifting about of some of the projects. One thing to note is the fact that we have moved um, the Procosa Middle School project back a little bit further in years, and this is being proposed, one, to allow in part for the, uh, us to sort of recover um, in term, uh, economically because the economics is having a real um, impact here on budget and will certainly on capital funding as well. And also to give um, some time for us to engage in discussion with our community as to what um, the community senses that we would want to do as we take a look at the middle school facility. 
We've also added this year the tennis courts because we've seen some real cracking occur in those tennis courts. I think we saw some pictures of that in the work session. And I think some, some folks have actually walked down and seen those cracks. So that's being added as a project. The track has been moved forward as well from where it was last year. Um, so that if we can get that completed, it will enable um, us to hold some additional athletic events on the track and also um, just be a better situation for the community use that that track receives. Uh, the biggest visual change really is that beyond um, 16 column that we've added. So we've put projects out there that we know need to be done in the future. We don't have exact dates for them, but our sense is the community just needs to understand we've got needs again. Things like roof repairs, just as in your house, you have to repair, you have to replace them, repair them um, every 20 years or so. We want to, folks to realize we've got that with buildings and some other items. So that's also in addition to this year's capital improvement plan. And just as a reminder, the capital improvement plan, once it's approved by the school board, is moved um, into the city's capital improvement plan. And the city manager will then take that forward to the planning commission. I believe he's intending to do that December 6th. And then it moves forward to council later, probably in February, once it's moved through the Planning Commission. So this is just a first step in terms of um, our portion of the city's entire capital improvement plan. With that, at this point, I would recommend approval of the proposed capital improvement plan. Thank you. All right. Do we have a motion to accept our CIP as presented? I move that uh, we accept the approval of the fiscal year 2011 CIP. We have a second. A second. Okay, do we have any discussion or comments? Yeah, one comment. Uh, looks like to me that we have a note about the boiler being funded is in progress. Must be done. Yes, we are still. <laughs> so. the, yeah, we still have to do the chiller, which is part of the funding that uh, council provided. So we'll have that up and ready for the spring. But we are happy that the heating system is working wonderfully. So. Mm -hmm. Any, any other discussion? No? All right. Pat, with you, please pull the board. Ms. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Carter? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Mr. Bellamy? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Chairman Diggs? Aye. The motion was passed with a vote of 7 to 0. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we'll move us into public comment. Do we have any this evening? No, sir, we do not. All right. Then we'll move to communications and other matters. Dr. Parrish, would you like to start us off tonight? Yes, that seems to always be the case. I just would like to start with budget, although I'll be very brief with that because as Mr. Bowen indicated, we really um, are just not going to have a very clear picture of where we're headed with budget until the governor releases his budget on December 17th. Um, so when we um, come back after the winter break, we'll definitely have some more information both for you and the community. And at that point, too, I'll be able to go out to the schools and talk with our staffs with some more details about budget. I just have not been able to do that this fall because things have been so quiet from Richmond and we just don't have anything concrete to share. But we will have some of that soon. We are tracking things as closely as possible. As a matter of fact, one of our legislators, Senator Miller, called me today to provide some updates. Um, and I believe the Senate um, Finance Committee is meeting this week, so I anticipate we'll get some more next week. But again, the concrete information comes once the governor releases his budget um, on December 17th. And then it takes the Virginia Department of Education a bit of time to work the tool um, that we need to actually um, make some calculations. Sort of in line with budget um, is the work that, again, our Pocosin Education Foundation is doing. They've now awarded all of the mini grants um, for this fall at all four of the schools. The last week was the last presentation. The teachers are very excited, and we've got projects underway as a result of that funding. So we do appreciate the support they continue to provide. And I'd really like to take um, this opportunity just to congratulate the students and staff on their many accomplishments. I think we saw this evening a variety of different recognitions, whether it's newspaper or choral or uh, academic achievement in terms of merit scholarship, um, nutrition and, and wellness. We saw some wonderful presentations from the students. We've got, we know our bands out there doing very well in their competition. Certainly we're well aware of our fact that our football team is now in the playoff, the first playoff game this Friday at home. So we really see our students just accomplishing, having accomplishments in so many areas and our, our staff and teachers work so hard to support that. But I also have to highlight that probably the most important accomplishment they have is in the area of academics and they continue to to achieve well. We finished our first quarter and the kids have accomplished a 
lot in those classrooms. So we really have so much to be thankful for, our teachers, our staff, um, the wonderful support from the parents and the community, um, uh, school board members such of you. So as we move into the holiday next week, I think um, it's just a great time to really thank everybody for that. And I do hope that next week everybody has a very restful and relaxing break. I know many people are looking forward to it. So thank you. Thank you. Nelly, your update, please. Okay. Uh, at the high school, the Academic Awards Assembly will be held this Thursday, November 18th. For 10th grade, it is at 7.50. For 11th grade, it starts at 8.25. And for 12th grade, it starts at 9.20. There was a Model UN conference held at William & Mary this past weekend where the high school team competed. The competitive cheer squad won regionals and finished seventh place at the state meet held at Virginia Commonwealth University this past weekend. Um, as Dr. Parrish had said, the varsity football team has won the district title and is, has advanced to the regionals, and they play this Friday. The band Winter Concert will be held at Tab High School on Monday, December 13th at 7 p.m. Monday, December 20th is the Winter Choral Concert, which will be held at Grafton High School. Uh, the tryouts for the winter sports at Pocosin High School are happening now, and they end this Friday, November 19th. A uh, volleyball dance has been scheduled by SCA on December 18th. There is a Toys for Tots campaign uh, in this December, which is sponsored by the SCA. And Cookies Because We Care is a campaign that provides homemade cookies to local military men and women that aren't able to go home for the holiday. And the high school is participating in that this December. Um, the middle school, uh, the eighth grade students are getting very excited for their field trip to Washington, D.C. That's uh, on November 23rd. Uh, FCCLA is having a canned food drive this week to support the local food pantry. The uh, eighth grade holiday musical is at 7 p.m. on Thursday, December 2nd. Thursday, December 9th at 7 p.m. is the holiday band concert. And the winter holiday concert is will be Thursday, December 16th at 7 p.m. At the elementary school, 12 students that raised the most money for the PTO fundraiser were picked up in a limo on Friday, November 10th to play Laser Rush. The chess club uh, finished in second place this past Thursday, November 13th in a tournament. Uh, the elementary school's parent portal it is accessible as of this past Monday. Uh, the envelopes have been sent home with students telling parents how to access parent portal. The first group of first quarter recognition awards will be this Friday, November 19th. The Times for Each Classes Awards is posted on iSchool. The annual book fair will be December 2nd through December 15th. Uh, Pocosin Primary School is having their third annual Come and Have Lunch with Your Child on Thanksgiving, Friday, November, or on the Thanksgiving lunch, Friday, November 19th. The Tuesday, November 23rd will be the Colonial Days for first grade. Wednesday, November 24th is a half day and students go home at 12.20 p.m. Yesterday was the beginning of American Education Week. Schools are closed from November 25th to November 28th for Thanksgiving break, but everyone returns Monday, November 29th. Thank you. <laughs> Do you need some oxygen? <laughs> I just wanted to say how much I enjoyed Jody King and her first graders and um, it was wonderful hearing some of that essential knowledge that I know is coming back in fourth grade being learned in first grades so that was awesome and um, just want to encourage everyone who's working in the schools to like Dr. Parrish said um, rest over Thanksgiving and come back charged up to make it a few more weeks before Christmas you can do it uh, yes, the band is absolutely on fire this year. They uh, got a superior rating at the Virginia Band and Orchestra Directors Association at War Hill. Um, they uh, were bumped up to 4A uh, category, and they won that at the uh, Kickatan Warrior Classic, and they're just doing a phenomenal job. They've come a long way, and, and uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Sproul and all his work with the band this year. Um, 
and and again I'd also like to thank the teachers and staff for their continued dedication to the kids and their hard work um, I know it's hard times but you guys are doing a great job so keep up the good work and when we started the pledge to tonight and I had my back turned and I heard those kids out there just saying the pledge with enthusiasm <coughs> and uh, that's awesome we're instilling patriotism in them and that's a great thing and I also want to say thanks to all the high school teachers who are uh, doing fundraisers for the troops and they're adopting troops and got them scattered all over the world and that's just a wonderful thing you guys are doing and I appreciate that <clears throat> no. Well, I would say uh, I also uh, recognize our youngest citizens, their enthusiasm behind us. It was, it was great. Uh, I attended a statewide career and technical ed advisor committee in Charlottesville on November 3rd, uh, discussing our plan of work for this year. We'll be making a presentation to State Board of Education first thing in January. Uh, we'll be attending some local meetings, career and technical ed advisor committees. And of course, we have a general concern over funding as well. Tomorrow I'll be at one of those first local committee meetings at the Prudence Center in Suffolk, and I'm there to listen to what the folks have to tell us about their concerns locally and take them back to the State Board. Uh, also attended a Peninsula Workforce Development uh, Education Subcommittee meeting, Education Subcommittee, and there we talked about the Career Expo 2011, exciting, and maybe the unveiling of a new career and technical ed video contest that we're running, uh, and it'll be featuring the 21 workplace readiness skills that uh, are, are so outstanding. So I've uh, been busy doing those things as well. Thank you. Robin. Uh, th this, uh, this month I attended the SHAB, our School Health Advisory Board Committee, um, as the school board rep, um, where we, uh, the Wellness Committee and nurses uh, gave reports, and I'd like to um, congratulate the middle school again on the governor's silver scoreboard um, uh, scorecard award that was quite an accomplishment from what I understand um, I would like to thank Doris Feltman and Lisa Hall um, I was a host mom for one of the Czech students and it was very exhausting very rewarding <laughs> but very exhausting and um, you guys you know it was even more exhausting for you so thank you so much for that and also um, I would like to also say I enjoyed the tour at the um, New Horizon Center with Mr. Johnson and uh, thank him very much for that Mark? have a great holiday thank you <laughs> Bill I felt like I was sitting through an all-star night with all the <laughs> recognitions and everything and they're all outstanding um, going through those I think the first graders I don't I told Jody King I don't know who enjoyed it more her or the kids because she was really into it but she does a great job with them um, and having them up in a group like that in a meeting like this having it organized I'm glad I wasn't the one that had to do that the, uh, that's it that's a chore I think with the New Horizons presentation, that was very uh, educational and enlightening on uh, how our kids are really doing over there. You know, we talk about it, and Mark is our rep to them, and we, he, we see his notes and what have you, but seeing that presentation tonight really comes home to how our kids are really doing over there, and they're really excelling. So it's worth it, and it's worth the money we put into that. Um, November 8th, the Pocosian Education Foundation, uh, Don Ward and I were at the middle school uh, with Mr. Pirelli and his staff, and we awarded a total of $2,600 in mini grants and grants to the middle school. And, you know, that's something really enjoyable when you're giving money to the teachers to work on grants. And from the Education Foundation, you know, we would like to see more of that. And hopefully with the teachers seeing the large checks that were presented and everything and doing it in front of the staff will get more of that uh, coming out that just makes us raise more money for it but it's a good worthwhile cause and you know it's good it's a win-win situation all the way around um, and i'd like to congratulate the football team on their season and being in the playoffs that's all i have all right thank you um, i'd also like just to, to recognize uh, this the honor it is for us to be able to do, do the kind of recognitions that we did 
this evening. It's such a diverse group. It's great to see um, the students coming up for so many different things. We had four different opportunities tonight to recognize their excellence. And, um, and then in our presentations with the uh, Czech students and with the New Horizons and ECPI, it's just because it really does give our, op our students the opportunity to excel and they're, they're taking advantage of those opportunities and, and stepping up and doing their part and excelling. And it's just great to see that. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Dr. Parrish and I had the opportunity to attend a, uh, um, I guess it was a, a regional area uh, meeting between uh, superintendents, chairmen, and the uh, military liaison uh, officers over on the USS Enterprise. Uh, they did a great job of hosting us and giving us a tour of the aircraft carrier and then uh, presenting us with a uh, opportunities and how we can support our military children and how uh, you know, they have a real heart for the uh, for the kids um, that are, are military kids that are moving into the area or, or raising our awareness of the uh, the opportunities we have to serve them and um, we're very fortunate in this area to have a lot of military uh, families and uh, I think it's great that we have uh, the people supporting them that we have that, that come in and help represent the, the needs and, and make us aware of how we can do a better job of supporting the families of the people that are protecting us and, and serving us day in and day out. And uh, along one of those lines, I'd also like to thank uh, Charlie French for his activities in getting the bleachers that we had during the uh, homecoming game and that we'll have available to us for the playoffs for the football uh, field. Uh, just uh, another example of uh, us uh, working with each other and uh, supporting our schools. So I really appreciate that from our liaison officers. And with that, I will uh, read our agenda for our work session where you have a, uh, an outline of the budget process and development, uh, an appropriation of funds discussion, board goals and objectives, uh, a joint meeting, and then we'll finish with a, a closed meeting to discuss personnel matters. And with that, we will close our regular meeting.